The 2015 Corvette Z06, it's a ton of car for the money, but is it the right ton? That's today on After Drive. Stay with us. Stay with us. Don't, what? You don't At like, the right ton, I just. You don't it's, like the right ton? Well, it's a, in other words, it's a ton of car, but is it with the car that you would want? All right, welcome to After Drive. We are at Classic Car Club Manhattan as usual, and of course, there's all kinds of activity going on out here. So if you hear any cars starting on cue, uh, don't worry about it. That's just what happens around here, and that's our that's our gig. So um, Travis Okulski from Jalopnik, yes. the deputy editor. Jason, <laughs> Jason Trackhorse Harper from uh, Time Inc. now, right, and uh, Automobile Magazine. So before we talk about the Corvette Z06, uh, let's take a look at a clip of something we put together of all the specs so we can get that out of the way really quickly. Check it out. You might say the Corvette Z06 was a beast of a car, but even a beast would have to acknowledge that in terms of sheer beastliness, the Corvette Z06 probably has the advantage. 6.2 liter supercharged V8, 650 horsepower, 650 pounds feet, massive grip on tires the size of whiskey barrels, Am I overstating the new King Corvette's capability? Well, you decide. Zero to 60 in under three seconds, quarter mile in under 11 seconds, 1.2 Gs of lateral grip, and 60 to zero braking in under 100 feet. All that plus adjustable aero, and all for less than a tenth of the price of a Ferrari LaFerrari. So, is the Corvette Z06 the bargain hypercar of the century, or is it just trying too hard to punch above its weight? As if that's a bad thing. And we're back. So Corvette Z06, you guys both drove it, and uh, the Classic Car Club bought one right off. So like it's one of the first ones that came out. So uh, and they only have cool shit in here, so you know that yeah. by sort of extension, this is a car that everybody wants. Yeah, exactly. Um, what was your initial impression of it when you drove it the first time? It's very fast. <laughs> like, it's a fast car. It's, no, like it's obscenely fast. You're on the road, right? You're in third gear. You figure you're going 50, 55 miles an hour. And you're like, let's step on it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I was in the automatic when I first drove it. So that's why I'm pulling the paddle. But with my imaginary <laughs> Your imaginary ship. Let's go. I look down. I'm going 145 miles an hour. I'm like, well, geez, I better slow down. It wasn't even that long of an acceleration. So but the statue in third gear, you were in 145? No, I, yeah. that's why I did that. <laughs> and you went, that's wait, you I was in fifth at that time. Yeah, okay. So, by the way, but, the statute of limitations on that 145 miles an hour. I don't know where I was. It was on a closed track oh, in, that's in right. Europe. Is where, in Europe. Yeah. Oh, so it was on the Autobahn. It's the Autobahn. No, but the engine is, it dominates the car on the street. It is... There's no it's a real, lot of it, there's too much car to actually have fun on the street, but there's a lot of fun to be had with the engine, I think. The engine off the line, mid-gear acceleration, it just always pulls no matter what. Yeah. Well, so this is an interesting point. Is it too much car for not driving it on a racetrack? Yes. Because basically, let's, let's look at it. They built it around an amazing set of tires that Michelin has. I mean, you know, whether it's the cups for, you know, for track use, which basically if you're not tracking it, mm -hmm you're buying 80% of a car, um, or maybe you're buying less. You might be buying 50% of a car if you're not tracking it, um, or you're buying 200% of a car if, <laughs> in other words, you're buying more car than yeah, you need. Your math is, 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 math is I've, I've lost. This but lost. you're buying more car than you need if you're not tracking it. It's basically built around amazing tires, and it's an amazingly capable car that's so far beyond what you'd ever use it on the street. Let's say if you try and push it on the street, you're going to end up on lively crashing into a bunch of trees because you're going to be going 100. Maybe you have your performance data running so you yeah. can share it with the whole world. But you'll be going like 135 yourself. miles an hour before the car starts to flinch. Here's the thing though, I'm going to actually disagree with that very much so because okay. I got in the car, rolled through Pahrump. We, we started in Pahrump. No, I don't know where that is. I wasn't going 135 <laughs> miles an hour there. And actually the car feels comfortable. It's easy to drive. You know, it's, it's sort of like when the R8 first came out and you were like, wow, this is an easy car to drive. Get in, get out. Actually, I was really impressed how sort of sophisticated it felt. The yeah. car like, is comfortable, it, it, it ran through traffic easily, both the, the manual and the automatic. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't feel like, you know, it doesn't feel like the Viper where either, you know, you're, you're running hard or you want to kill yourself. It, right. There's this huge area in between. And if you do want to jump out of a stoplight and act silly, you can do that. But I didn't feel like I had to be going nine tenths all the time. Right. 
Well, that shouldn't be surprising though, because the Stingray is such an exactly. easy to drive, pleasant, exactly right. refined car. Yeah. And this is basically just a really, really fast, But really once good we Stingray. got out on the open road, I actually enjoy the hell out of it as well. I, there's certain cars I feel, cars I feel like I am not tapping potential on the real road. It's not that much fun. I can, some of the Ferraris leap to mind, you yeah. know, the big 12 cylinders. You're like, I, this, I didn't feel, I felt like it was visceral. It, it, it translated. And above 130, the downforce actually works. I don't know how That's many production true. road cars you actually start feeling more buttoned up over 130. This right. one does. Well, you know, that's really interesting. I don't know which car, whether it's the Porsche GT3 or this one, are cl closer to the GT car. You know, I, I think this may be closer yeah. to the uh, to the downforce the car than the, the Porsche is to, uh, the Porsche GT3 is to I mean, did you notice that you actually felt the downforce? Yeah. That's unusual, you know, there's, companies always claim there's 40% more downforce, which is, right. you know, right. doesn't mean shit. Right, but then they don't, they don't the tell world. you that there's also more lift. Yeah, exactly they right, exactly the right. To the This car, yeah, I was so. like, dude, it's at 150, it's more buttoned down than at 130. Well, so that's the Z07 package with the stage three arrow. So there are three different actually, sets this, of arrow. Actually, I'm talking actually, actually a stage two. Really? As a matter of fact. All right. I, I noticeably felt the difference. I only drove to the stage three on the road. So well, the stage four. three. <laughs> well, what's, yeah, I claimed them immediately. And and that's part of the track thing. So like, when when you get to stage three, you can adjust it. Perhaps so, we should explain what the three stages yeah, let's, are. Let's go mm -hmm. through the the stages, right? So stage one is base, right? Which actually on track was less buttoned up and a hell of a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, it was a ton of fun. Right. So I mean, that's basically like you're looking at the uh, a couple of little canards. You've got the you know the front splitter. You've got a little bit in the back, but not a whole lot of... Not all the crazy arrow, yeah, yeah, basically. Right. Second and stage... Same to the base tires. Yeah. Yeah, pilot the uh, sport... Uh, no, the super sports. Super sports. Yeah. Super sports. So second one adds some dive planes and adds some other sort of second level arrow you get the, stuff. You get the rear. And you get the rear. Yes. Stage three is it looks like all super tuned, you know... Uh, the, actually, I was going to point to this car, but this car doesn't have... It only has stage one. Um, stage three is really, really intricate. Yes. And how much downforce at 150 miles an hour, they were saying? 300 and something pounds? It feels like 300 pounds, yeah. It's crazy. An actual, real. I mean, versus yeah. sort of yeah. the conceptual uh, downforce. Right. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, and you can't see out the back window as well because the... Uh, well, that's why they made the wick. There's a, so the wicker that's on the back that is yeah. adjustable, they made it clear. So because if you don't have it clear, you can't see out of the rear view. Right. Head. When you get to stage three, though, it's kind of... It, it's... When you get to the adjustability of it, it's for people that are going to take yes. it on a racetrack and make it part of their life, where they're going to actually adjust, actually it. adjust it. Right. Mm -hmm. I hate to say this, I would probably just go ahead and buy the stage two because it's good on the everyday road and it's certainly hellacious on the racetrack. For the you know, you're gonna drive yeah. it up, yeah. drive it on the racetrack, and then drive it back home. Right. I mean, at that point, if you really are gonna track it that hard, then go ahead and get the real race car because you can actually buy the real race car, something that's similar you've seen at Le Mans. So just go buy that car. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So well, let's talk about it on the racetrack because they, you know, that's. That's really this thing's na native habitat. I mean, more so with the Z07 package and the, and, the, and the good track tires and stuff. But, you know, this is a car that is made to be on a racetrack. And if you're not tracking it, you're mm -hmm. buying a very small portion of the car, really. Right. I, I, you know, I still just I sort of disagree, disagree with that, with that because, yeah. you, because you're able to dial in all the different levels. It just That's allows true. you to go far more extreme. Unlike certain cars where you're either going balls out or, or the car's overheating, there's yeah. none of those issues with this car. Right. I mean, so many people, you know, you buy a, a 700 foot pound uh, torque AMG that never gets you, you know, in, in, a, in a G wagon is, is but, silly. But Whereas this makes more sense. Well, there's this car, why not just buy a Stingray if you're just going to use it on the street? Well, Stingray is fast enough. Because it's it is fast, so but fast. this is even more fun. Here's the thing that does get me is the people who buy the convertible Z06. Right. That now is useless. Right. I don't think I, that's a poser mobile. Well, we should mention that the, the base car has a target top. And it's like, and the, the old Z06 didn't have one because they, they, you know, the, the frame and the, the body is so much more yeah. rigid now that they can do that and not lose rigidity without now, the, the top. Now, the thing is though, so this car with the target removed, I think it said 20% stiffer yeah. than the old car with the fixed roof. Right. With the target in place, I think it's 60% stiffer. Yeah, it's, it's actually well, load bearing. It actually. Yeah. But, if they fix the roof, it would be even stiffer. Well, that's when you actually get the race car again. But that's the whole thing. Roll is cage, that they've, they've all I mean, got, they've all got the, 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 well, the Z06 to me is the, the hardcore Corvette, right? But that goes, right, but that goes back to Harper's question about the convertible. The reason is that they're probably going to sell more automatic convertibles 
than they are about of, of the track. It's baseball. the same. Pro you know, you, you buy the, the you buy the you know. I, I mean, thank God Porsche doesn't sell a GT3 convertible. <laughs> you know, I mean, That's you can buy true, the right? M3 yeah, yeah. you know as a convertible. These are cars that really shouldn't exist, but right. do. Yeah. I mean, but that's the thing is that some people want the top of the line Corvette. I want no to pay an extra forty is, grand. Yeah. I'm gonna get the convertible because I want it. You know, I want a convertible experience, and they don't care what the arrow is. They just want the specced up best thing you can get. Hey, as long as it keeps GM making kick-ass cars like this, I'm actually okay with that. Well, that's the thing. Paying for it, you know, it's a, it's a very profitable situation making this car so adaptable to people's luxury needs because basically. There are three levels of seating you can get now. I mean, there's the, the, the top leather, you know, it, the interior is 10 times better than it used to be. So they've added all of this stuff that luxury buyers are into. So you don't necessarily have to buy it to drive it on a racetrack and to use all those, you know, the, the 1.2 Gs of lateral grip that it, it has. I mean, but, but it's sort of the bragging rights for Corvette owners is yeah. there, I mean, is that a bad thing for Corvette? No, I mean, it's a good thing that they can sell, if they can sell a car like the Stage 3 Z06, Z07 pack, if that means we have to get a convertible Z06, which I think looks great. I think it, with, with all the arrow on the thing, it looks like an old old school Speedster, I think it looks awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. Chopped, chopped windshield, everything, but I just don't, I don't like, the, I, I understand why the car exists, but I would never have one. It's not what we would buy. But here's my question is, does the Z06 qualify as a supercar? That's a good question. Capability-wise, I would say it's really close, Travis. You're thinking. I, think, <laughs> I don't think that it fits the definition of a supercar, because I think of a supercar as a one-off, sort of highest tech, newest Which, tech, experimental sort of thing. So I think McLaren P1, Carrera so you know, Huracan 9, would, 918. A no, Huracan, Huracan isn't a supercar. Huracan though? is not a supercar. 458 or the 488 GTB, are whatever not it is super now, cars. not a supercar. Wow, you are just a harsh. No, you're just a the top, leveled up Because it, it's always been the top of the top, has always been the supercar in the range. But now we have this nomenclature of hypercar. Yeah, that, to, to, we're not getting into to, that because that's bull, hypercar is marketing be, bullshit or, that means nothing. 458 to me is absolutely a supercar. Nah. Well, you know what's interesting? Like, <laughs> it's it a divorce from a, a Toyota Avalon as you could get. You know? <laughs> it's, a, it's a super sports car. It's a super sports car. Mm -hmm. So you're just adding in one more. Just no, one I'm, more I'm, word I'm calling it to, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be the 200. Like, I mean, you know, 20 years ago, it was like if it could go 200, it was a supercar. But that's And zero to 60 in three seconds. Under three seconds. Dude, I mean, if that isn't super, I don't know what it is. Did either well, of you get to 60 in 2.95 as they claim? Because I sure did. I did sideways. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, look, could, can any car with a pushrod V8 be a supercar? Yeah, sure. I don't. I, I mean, don't, I'm okay this, with this it. engine. is is phenomenal. I don't yeah. think I don't, if you're going to complain about this engine, I think you're huffing glue. You know? Well, the you know there are Here's, a lot of reasons. Let me say, something interesting. In this yeah. car is on the racetrack. It acts just as an LMP1 car when you're at you, when you're at you're twist. LMP1 car one oh, that's right. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, they say go slap all the way down on the accelerator. The car will sort it out. See, Which is a terrible lesson to learn, but yeah. that, that's how much thought has gone into it. Well, this that's thing. what we should. So the it has the pursuit, the track man, PTM. Yep. So the traction management system. Yeah. So when you put it into track mode, then there's five modes within track mode. Right. So there's wet and dry. Those are for wimps. And then there's sport one, <laughs> sport two, and race. Yeah. Yeah. So sport one leaves on you know your active handling your sport your two ESP. does. Yeah. Sport two, two turns takes. off the ESP, but leaves on a lot of traction control. Race. Makes the trash roll less intrusive. Supposedly, and you're no... faster. It just it just helps you keep things fast. But yeah. that's the thing. It's so counterintuitive because they say when you get to the apex, before instead of bleeding in the throttle, just they you stop on it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and you can feel the engine. It's like, it sounds it, like it, it's, it, it's cutting it, 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 oh, yeah. Which yeah. is awesome. It's I, like I got used to it. Unfortunately, yeah. next time I'm back on track, it's going to be with another car. I'm screwed because right. I, I just was like, I could do that. Yeah, you know. And I didn't turn the track control all the way off because I'm more drift idiot than drift hero, and I didn't want to make a fool of myself. Well, and the thing is, it's really hard to get this car in race to wiggle, as a matter of fact. The back end doesn't yeah. actually come out, which is also counterintuitive. You think it, it actually keeps things from, from sliding as much. It's harder to get some angle in there, it's, whereas it's in like level time. one, you can yeah. actually get some angle in there, which is also counterintuitive. Well, that's the qualifying uh, setting. Like, if you, you want to get the fastest lap, that's where you go. It's hard to get into these modes, and I've talked to the engineers why, and they're like, we don't want your average user into these modes. You have to be smart enough to know the modes are there. Right. And to be able to figure out how to get there, because if you haven't taken the time to learn that, you probably haven't taken the time to learn to drive. Well, the interesting thing about this is that the whole debate between is the ZR1, the old ZR1, a better 
faster car than this one. And it's not. I, you know what? It is it in may a straight be, line. It may be in a straight line, and it may be at the hands of Johnny O'Connell and uh, Dave Miro, but you know what? Like, this is the sort of pure democracy of technology making people better at driving. Well, I mean, whether you like that or not as a concept, well, is a whole and, other and you story. can shut everything off. Here's the other thing: is you can shut everything off on this car if you want. Yeah. It, it doesn't like leave the little nanny in the way in the background. No, everything's off. Yeah. This this car allows. It, this is the master of all worlds, as far as I'm concerned, and that is phenomenal. And that makes this car really special. Does a good burnout too. Does a hell of a burnout. No. All right. <laughs> so I did a couple. So yes or no? What would you put this in your garage today? And what other cars would you have to own before you bought this thing? You know, you know well, that you know what you that mean question like, means, though, right? No, like I don't having know what that this question. as my only car, or what can I have it as my second or third? Or well, would it or be your car? would it be your second car? Would it be your third car? Here's the amazing thing. Or would it be your first car? At, I could only, do, at, at a base of eighty, really? as a base of eighty, you know, most of these guys who own Ferraris have four cars, but as a base of eighty, you could make this certainly your second car. Yeah. Make, it, you make it your only car. I know there's one guy, uh, Gene. Sanchez Lee. Right, right, right. He's sure. running one with snow tires on it right now. That's I love that. Winter. I got great respect for that. That's yeah. awesome. And I think, you know, I think you could drive this every day. It's comfortable. You know, when you change the suspension settings, if you have a magnetic ride, it's super easy. The transmissions, the transmissions are both really good. Yeah. Though I'd get the manual because the automatic has some weird issues when you're, when you're in it. Well, the interesting thing about the manual, I mean, for an automatic with a torque converter, I mean, it is about as fast as you can get. I mean, pretty damn good. It's pretty damn. And good. I have to admit, on the track, it was nice to sort of not worry about it a little yes. bit. Yes, yeah, I did it. it was one, pretty. We did one run in drive. That was the last run I did. I just put it in drive. They told me put it in drive. You'll be, un you won't believe it's how great. good it is. It's it was great. so good. It's good. It's not quite as good it's as not the PDK. Porsche good. It's yeah, it's not, not PDK good. good. It's not Porsche good. But you're but not paying. As good as PDK. And you're not paying Porsche double coupling. 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 Double confused by more casual, like slower driving. Yeah. So if you're, you know, well, why are you going slow? <laughs> Let's say you're, you're in town, you're, you know, you're not going to go 140 miles an hour. So you're doing like third to fourth. It's kind of lazy on downshifts. It mismatches revs sometimes. He's it's, complaining, but you know, he, he went I mean, 150 in third gear, remember? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Third gear. Um, so the other thing, the, you know, there is that talk that, that there, the ECU is tuned sort of to, to protect this car, you know, because people were saying that, that they were being held back in performance. Who was saying that? People on the forums were saying that. Oh, well, I'm sure they um, and And the problem with GM building this is that the company itself has standards and practices for durability and stuff that they have to meet. And that's Q the YouTube comments. Well, yeah. Q the YouTube well, comments. When John, right, exactly. when John Hennessy gets his hand on, hands on this car, it, you know. Right. It already he, has enough power. I can't imagine. Yeah, I, 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 I have more to agree. Power, power is more power. Power is no. not the problem. It's, it's a really. There's no problem. I don't really see a problem with this car. I don't either. I yeah. think. Except I mean, for the convertible. How's right. that? <laughs> I, the only problem, <laughs> the only problem I see is takeaway. the convertible and the removal roof. I'd want to see a hardcore. I like the target. Hardcore version. And apparently they've had a number of requests for a hardcore version. So and like, like a fixed roof. A so, and, and they're taking it under advisement, as I was Here, told. Here's, by, here's uh, really Tad the last question of the day. Where will there be? They're saying no, but will there really be a ZR1 version at some point? No. Well, I the, don't think so, no, because this takes the place of what the ZR1 used to be, which was so like the... There will the, not be a front-engine ZR1. Oh, good, good. Because oh. as Tadge right, John, has sure. said, well, Tadge, the chief engineer of the car, has said on the record that this is the furthest they could take the architecture of this car. Right. So, so oh, the God. next architecture... <laughs> the next architecture will be that mid-engine U that You hold your breath. You hold your breath on that. <laughs> I mean, I've been saying that the mid-engine Corvette is a pipe dream. It's like the second avenue since subway. I've, since I've had yeah, a, yeah. Since I've right, had the second avenue, avenue, although now they're building it. Yeah. So yeah. they're almost sure they done are. with it. Yeah, sure they are. To the second avenue subway, yeah. it's under there. It's the, a thing. The Illuminati lives there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so, so there it is. good stuff from Chevrolet. Um, mid-engine Corvette on the way probably in five, Two years, ten yeah. years. No, it's, it's, the it's, next. I'm going to pretend it's a myth until, even when I drive we'll it, I'll say it's a myth. So seven years, so like the cycle. 26 we'll years. We'll see. 26 years. Never gonna 45 years. Anyway, Travis Sikulski from Jalopnik, Jason Harper from everywhere else, <laughs> including Time Inc. 
and Automobile Magazine. Good to have you guys on. We'll see you soon. We'll talk about some other bullshit. We'll be driving next time. Yeah, we'll be driving cars. Great. All right. That's After Drive. We'll see you later.